This is sad. Very sad only. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever I did, I'm sorry. Well, this is your fault. They did not need to die. My fault they attacked me. How am I the bad guy? Your fault! Hey, woo. Your fault! You're like a baby making noise, don't know what to do. Okay, friends, we are back, and uh, for today's episode, uh, I think it's a continuation of the last one uh, Matt, Felix, and I sketched out, and in in that episode, uh, our most recent one, if you go back and listen to it, at the end, I it, it envisioned a scenario, I, I, I charted a course out of the our, our sort of malaise, despair, darkness of living in a... A fading empire, uh, choking out its last breath with everyone inside, wondering when the COVID is ever going to end, and if we're ever going to have anything better. And part of that, the roadmap that I sketched out here, depends on analyzing a a post-colonial text, a post-colonial text that you know previously we have asked on this show, and others have too. What if what Yoda? Yoda? was six feet tall and he smoked weed. What we will do for you today is posit the question, what if Yoda was 10 feet tall and interested in, instead of smoking weed, turning the arms, weapons, and technology of the Imperial Death State against itself in an act of revolutionary violence and uh, oneness with the world and the environment and uh, the world tree. I'm talking, of course, about Avatar. And, you know, we talked about it last week, and we were so moved by it that Matt Felix and I had to go back and rewatch Avatar and share that experience with you because I, I do believe, I do believe, like, you know, like sort of like the words of Franz Fanon, it does create, through movie magic, a, a popular... Up until very recently, the highest grossing movie of all time, of which the point is basically that to become a real human being, you have to lay down your life in revolutionary violence against the state. So, to that end, we bring you Avatar, directed by James Cameron of the, of the Dipset crew. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a movie I've talked about for a very long time uh, that every time I talk about it, people always go, I don't get this bit. Uh, yeah, the blue guys were funny. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And I think Matt and Will were kind of kidding. Yeah. Yes, before, I was. Before Absolutely. This, before this, they were like, oh, yeah, ha, the blue guys. I don't think they really knew uh, if I liked it or not. But... After this viewing, I have successfully avatar pilled them. Yeah, I'm blue absolutely. Pilled. I am yeah. blue pilled. We've been Pandora pilled. Yeah, yeah, blue yeah. man now. Yeah, I just want to. Um, so, Avatar, it has a strange cultural place, right? Because it made how much did it make in theatrical release? Um, I have this in front of me right here. Hold on a second. Uh, it earned. Um, Three billion five hundred thirty-seven million dollars uh, domestically. A record that was only beaten by its disgusting tulpa, Marvel <laughs> uh, Avengers: Infinity uh, War. Uh, and oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I, I, I fucked that up. I, I was that, like, it, what? Three billion? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> sorry, it, it, it grossed over two billion dollars worldwide. Right, still amazing. Seven hundred million dollars in the U.S. and Canada. Right. So this was a record that was only beaten by the adventures. Um, and what's weird about this movie is it didn't have the cultural purchase of the Avengers. Like, there's going to be no. You notice? I was thinking about Jamie Harrison. You know, Jamie Harrison, the guy who ate shit to Lindsey Graham. Uh, oh yeah! Oh, right. I was yeah, thinking yeah. about how in his Twitter bio he says "fan of Marvel," 
<laughs> no, I did not know no, that. no, 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 <laughs> no Democrat. And, and I thought all about the Democrats who were like, oh, we're like the Avengers or even like the Dan Crenshaw, who loves uh, Avengers shit. It's just soy monoculture bullshit. That's it's the safe thing to like. No one ever did that with Avatar. But yep. you know what they did do with Avatar? People's middle aged fathers wanted to kill themselves to be alive <laughs> in Navi. Uh, people started questioning Empire. I remember my brother posted about this when I was posting about Avatar literally all weekend. Uh, that my mom and dad called him on the phone. You know, he is like an adult with a job. They called him in like 2010 and were like, you have to see Avatar. And my mom, who is like, I think, um, like in her late 50s at the time, was like, it's about capitalism, imperialism, power, racism. And then my dad just shouted in the background, it's about love. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did have an amazing effect on people. It did have an amazing effect on people. But the media consciously did not want it to be memefied. And it could well, be memefied. It because could it's be, too, yeah. yeah. You couldn't process... Like people like to point that out about about Avatar. Oh, it had no cultural long lasting impact. Well, what is the actual cultural long lasting input pack of other big movies like the Revengers? Uh, it's just it's memes. It's it's yep. easily digested little pellets of like things that replace your personality. The stuff in Avatar that's memorable. It's not like you know this. It's not uh. It's not guys in suits who do quips and do bants that you can repeat to your friends. Because Jake Sully is, as we'll talk about, sort of an intentional empty space in the middle of the movie. Uh, what it does, what the stuff that like is resonant, it can't be translated culturally, and so it just has to go away. Everyone saw it, and everybody fucking loved it when they were watching it. And they're lying if they say they didn't, because it didn't make that much movie. It didn't make that much money. A a total new, not i not a licensed IP thing. Nobody saw. Everybody didn't see that movie, and was like, that sucked. It, it's just that. Over time, as they you know thought about it, and nothing could stick because there was nothing in the culture to like pick it up and turn it into anything. Yeah, and you can't you can't see Avatar and love it and cry like I did watching again. I cried during parts of it. I never cry during movies or anything. I've cried twice in my life. Uh, once, <laughs> one, and once when I was born, and the other time was when watching Avatar. Uh, and uh, you can't do that and then go on with your life. You have to make a choice. You're like, do I love Avatar and the message of Avatar and the world of Avatar? And as we'll get into later, the world of Avatar is just love. Yeah. We can live in Pandora. But uh, And then go, Obama's epic. Obama, yeah. who's not pulling out of... Pan the Pandora district of Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> can you, can you like a Marvel, even, you know, uh, Avengers for all their liberal peons, they're so Ken doll esque, so shaved down, so smooth that even an art, uh, a full on reactionary like Dan Crenshaw can love them. But yeah, you can't do that with avatar. You can't be like, I love avatar and uh, I want Tom Cotton to be president. no, <laughs> But because no, yeah. both no, sides this of the yeah. evil of Empire are represented as the bad guys in Empire in in Avatar. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw I saw something today on Twitter that said that uh, um, Chris Evans's portrayal as Captain America probably did more to uh, rehabilitate the idea of America as a good place in the world than anything else that's happened in in like subsequent time period. And you know what? There's probably some truth to that. But there, the guy who said I, that I, think that's a good thing. He thinks, thinks, that's, a he good thinks thing. that's a good thing. He thinks that's a good thing. <laughs> and the me and like the like the message of Avatar is like is like unlike the adventures, it, it, like this idea that um, uh, the good people come together to fight on behalf of you know like like the values that we as Americans hold dear to ourselves. The message of Avatar is that if you are a good person, you need to come together and destroy America. <laughs> and literally lay down your life it, like in, in, in a violent revolutionary struggle against the American state. Avatar is telling you you have to be Chelsea Manning. <laughs> like if you yes. you can't you have just, to betray you your country. You can't be a cog in the machine and feel bad about it. And that's enough. You can't be Martin Freeman, the soy CIA man from Black Panther. Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, and, and you know what? I remember when Avatar first came out. 
and it was um, phenomenally successful at the box office. As we said, up until Adventures, it was the highest grossing movie of all time. And, but I did remember when it came out, uh, like certain conservative critics were very angry at the movie because they were like, oh, I was looking forward to Avatar. But then at the end, I couldn't believe that Hollywood has gotten to the point of anti-Americanism in which they would presume that the audience would be cheering to have these stand-ins for American GIs be um, annihilated <laughs> in combat. I was there. They I, did. <laughs> they did. People yeah, were standing up in the theater. People were standing up in the theater and rooting for the Viet Cong. <laughs> yes. In Chicago. In, in uh, theaters all over the fucking country. They were doing that. And, and you know, like, if you feel like you're right. When I first saw this movie, I thought it sucked. And I thought it was kind of an embarrassment to like to, to look back on. I thought, it, and then I sort of ironically liked it. And then I was like, yeah, you know, there's, there's something good about it. But yes, Felix, uh, and, and just and James Cameron and his entire sort of canon of movies, which this very, very like fits into, you know, has has convinced me that that, that this mo- that this movie is not just good, but maybe a masterpiece. Because like when I first saw it, I was like. I was like, oh, this is just Dances with Wolves. This is just a remake of Dances with Wolves or Pocahontas or something. Like, we've seen this story. Oh, like, you know, like the white guy has a romance with a, a you know, he, he falls in love with a woman from a different culture. And then, like, oh, he sort of adopts it as, as his own. But I don't think that's really, I mean, that does happen in Avatar. But that's not really what's going on here, in my opinion. No, Absolutely. It's totally, it's completely different. It's completely different from Hollywood white savior movies about Native Americans, which, by the way, those movies, the point of those movies is they were made during America's ascension as the sole superpower, but in a new American liberal culture. And that was, that is to say that those movies were, no, we're the only superpower. We deserve to be. We deserve everything we have. But uh, we did some bad stuff, and all you have to do is feel bad about it for two hours in an air conditioned room and then go on with your life. And you're a good person because you feel yep. bad about it. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll throw in a bonus. We're going to make one of the good guys, one of you, we're going to make him one of your fucking Scots, Irish idiot ancestors. <laughs> and, and, and he, he's not actually a white savior. Cause he doesn't, he, he doesn't look at the course. Of, he doesn't save anything. <laughs> Avatar. Avatar is, about a white savior, but it's totally different. It's totally different because Jake Sully, the hero of Avatar, he's a nothing. He's a nobody. He's he's a cipher. And people criticize this performance by Joel Edgerton, but it's no, no, really it's Sam Worthington. <laughs> same guy. <laughs> That's yeah, how much of a guy. cipher is he's yeah. confused him with the, yet another stock Australian yeah. guy, like sort of tough guy movie actor. Exactly though. But that's like why it's brilliant. It, it's like, no, he would have to be someone who was on the the surplus benefiting side of Earth? Yep. But is still so alienated and literally chewed up and spit out. Has lost his brother. Has lost his familial connection. Has lost, lost the his use legs. Of his body. Yes. And is so devoid of characteristics and personality and anything like culture or affection because of the because. You could be given all this surplus, literally surplus from space, surplus from the heavens. Yes. And you can be nothing because it's not meant for you. Yeah. It's meant for the guy who owns the company, who processes the surplus. And he he doesn't just – he's not a white savior who, like, he's better at being indigenous than no. indigenous people. <laughs> no. That's not the point. The point is he gives them the only thing that he can give, which is knowledge of how the empire works. That's – what an act that's actual solidarity actually he actually helps them in the only way he can and what's more he completely sacrifices who he was in the empire he doesn't go back he can't well, go back i mean he and that's the other reason he's not a fucking white savior he's not white by the time he does the savioring he's literally one of them actually like you talk about oh uh, he's he's a seven foot he's a 12 foot tall blue man he he is that's 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 it. He's with them. He is as abject and as uh, he is. Uh, he is part of the. By... He is part of the people. He is. He is one of the uh, Omatakaya. Exactly. Because Not he that... gave he gave himself up. Because he gave his life up. Literally, he gave his body. His body withers away at the end of the movie. His body goes away. 
There, there is no more Jake Sully anymore. Yeah, he's, he's in Navi now. And, and like, Navi. People, people get like rile about that because like, oh, yeah, you're uh, you're you're letting off, you know, uh, white people. You're letting off, uh, you know, the, the, the criminals of Empire because this is after all, you know, what is this? This is a thing for all of these, you know, uh, uh, fussy toddlers sitting in the global West to uh, entertain themselves. Uh, but like you said, there's no feeling good because if you want to. If you if you by the end of the movie are rooting for the fucking Navi and you find anything cathartic about that moment at the end where he literally wakes up as a Navi, a full one for the first time, uh, you have to do that by having fully emotionally divorced yourself, not ironically, not through the gauze of history, but through the actuality of of the American empire. All right. So let's get into let's get into the movie itself. Because I mean, we've re- referred to some of the elements of it, but I think by you know sussing out the details, I think if if perhaps you're rolling your eyes at, at the case you're making here, I think I think I think describing the film itself and, and some of the parts in it will hopefully begin to clarify where we're coming from here. So uh, the, the movie begins in uh, I believe it is the year twenty one fifty four. It is in a, a future in which we have uh, discovered a uh, a. A resource-rich, densely forested moon of a gas giant planet in the Alpha Centauri system. And that we have been, because we have depleted all of Earth's natural resources, we have begun to mine this this sort of Eden-like planet for a a rare Earth mineral, or (laughs) I mean rare Pandora mineral, (laughs) called uh, uh, unobtainium that we now, that, that is now like the like oil, like petroleum on Earth is like this sort of engine of our global economy. And like this is our new like sort of extractive uh, form of capitalism. And uh, the main character, Jake Sully, played by Sam Worthington, is a former Marine who has been uh, paralyzed in combat. He's a paraplegic. (laughs) Paralyzed, by the way, and the movie makes clear, in a campaign fought in Venezuela. Yep. So once again, Cameron is Cameron is telling you here, uh, this is the future, America. Yeah, this is where we're going. We got to march over the whole surface of the world to physically secure its resources as they dwindle. And the end of that is not some fixing or getting into anything new. It's oh shit, we got to find another planet. Yeah, we have to. We literally <laughs> yeah. have to find another Earth to rape and pillage to keep, uh, like you know, our home planet to keep the system of of capitalism going on our home planet yeah do you see, guys see that uh that like viral news story a couple weeks ago where it's like there's a comet worth 70 trillion zillion dollars uh in the in milky way or whatever it's like boy if we could just get our hands on that baby our problems will be over yeah so like and, and then and you know it is strongly implied as well that that the earth of 2154 is 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 a husk yeah, that there is no more. There are no more trees. There are no. There is no more nature on our planet because we've destroyed it all through the process of, yeah, like um, ex- extraction, capitalism, and exploitation. So we just have to find a new Eden, and it, it and the unobtainium there, and take it. But the problem is, the planet is habited, habited by a humanoid species called the Navi. But the thing is, the atmosphere of Pandora is uh, toxic to human beings. We can't breathe it. We, we need to be either inside in our, in, in, the, in the sort of a, a mining town and military base facilities that we build as sort of beachheads to go out and uh, mine this stuff. Um, but we have to like, you know, you have to wear masks um, if you're out like, you know, in the air of Pandora. So the solution to that problem is that the company in conjunction with, you know, advanced scientists and academics, have created a way to uh, clone the bodies of the Navi and create a, a like, a sort of uh, a keyed to an individual's um, specific genetic code, a, a sort of a, a Navi match for them, through which, uh, through, through the magic of technology and science, you can sort of project your brain and consciousness into and have and then and then and then it, you know you're you're now inhabiting the body of one of these uh 10 feet tall navi people and but but, but crucially you have free reign now to to walk and exist in 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 the in the, in the space of pandora right 
And so, like, the, there's this there's this uh, uneasy alliance here between a a a a, mil- a military corporation, a private corporation that ha- is is also an arm of uh, the the United States military, and they and they and they use you know their own Marines as basically private security forces to help the securing of this mineral from this planet and fight any natives, any of the Navi people who would uh, wish them to uh, let's, for it, stop strip mining their planet. And, the, and the, the crucial thing here with Jake Sully is that he was never meant to travel to Pandora. He only goes to Pandora because his identical twin brother <laughs> Yes, was a, like you know he was he was, he the, was the nerd. He was, he the, was the nerd. He was the guy who had, had spent his whole life training for this and studying Navi and uh, you know preparing to um, inhabit his avatar on Pandora. Uh, he is randomly killed in some sort of like street mugging or something like that, and because it's his identical brother, he has the same genetic code. And like you know they've probably spent a trillion dollars creating this fucking avatar body for him. So they're like, well, we're not just going to let it go to waste. If, if he, you're, he's a suitable candidate, why don't you go? Like, you know, what are you doing here on Earth? Just he's in his wheelchair and he just his brother's dead. He's got not, not a lot going on for him. So put him on the spaceship, put him in cryo sleep, six and a half year trip out to Alpha Centauri. Uh, he, and then like, you know, he, he wakes up. He wakes up from the six year dream and is now in a completely different world. And he, like he gets off the shuttle, like you know he rolls out there. Initially, I mean he he meets the um, the head of the the Avatar program on Pandora is played by Sigourney Weaver. She is Doctor Grace Augustine, and she is um kind of pissed that she has to deal with and like you know with the right guy's idiot brother who she he she views as just a grunt and a moron, but like. She has to do it because he's the only one that can inhabit this body that, like I said, they've probably spent a trillion dollars cloning and growing in a vat. Um, and like to Felix's point earlier in the movie, or sorry, earlier in the episode here, uh, Sam Worthington. I'll say that again. Sam Worthington. <laughs> see, see if that pings anything Jason in your Clark. brain. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no Jake, 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 sorry, Sam Worthington. Uh, Jack Courtney. What? I'm sorry. Who is a just about... Like he he's sort of like um like the beginning of the character select screen before you add any attributes. Yes. Like that that is Sam Worthington as like as an actor. Like, he's the like, default protagonist from a video game. And and the thing is like he's not he's not a terrible he's like he's not a terrible actor. It's not like the performance is like really grating. It's just he doesn't have any like personality or charisma or like really any anything about him that like connects with you or, or, or feels memorable or it's just like, and again, it's just like, who the fuck is Sam Worthington? Why this guy? And that always pissed me off about the movie because I was like, who is this fucking Zero? I mean, like, T2 had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. You know what I mean? Aliens had fucking uh, Bill Paxton, Michael Bain, Paul Reiser, Sigourney Weaver. They had these great characters that you like, that you remember and you, you root for and you want to be like them. But I think when Felix pointed out to me that because Sam Worthington and his character Jake Sully is such a cipher, I think that is actually intentional on Cameron's part. In that, like you said, like he he is a nobody. Like he that he is the type of person that America produces. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's that, and that's in opposition to the protagonist in the Marvel movies, where oh, he's literally a superhero, but he sounds like me. He makes the same references and has the same cultural palette as me. All of the stuff that, you know, that this like just the shit that's like I've picked up while rolling through life, you know, like a fucking uh, like a hot dog going under the, the refrigerator. Uh, it, it, it being reflected back to me literally out of the mouth of a fucking man god. <laughs> and so it's like it, it gives you this idea. It, it, it's try, those movies get like culturally sticky and get memeable because they're telling the audience, hey, look at you. Look at you. Whereas. Cameron's like, yeah, this is you, dude. This is you. Yeah, you're boring. Like yeah. you don't have you don't have quips. You don't have bands. You don't even have powers. Yeah, you're just a guy who 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 fucking got sh- uh, blown up fighting for his country. And they even though and he says this in the first uh, intro voiceover, even though the t- technology exists to <laughs> yeah, yes. cure yes. paralysis, he cannot get it. 
because it's because it it's too money. expensive. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, that is a, that is a very interesting and telling detail of this. Is that Cameron does not miss a beat. Like he's like, you, you might think, oh, like you know, uh, over a century in the future where we've um, mastered uh, intergalactic travel and terraforming of other planets and shit, uh, we can't cure a spinal injury. Yeah. And he's like, uh, no, we can, but only rich people can obtain it. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's what I love. There is the I saw someone the other day point out how it was Yasha Levine, how science fiction writers um in their depictions of the future they do not depict poverty. Mm-hmm. Like it's just like we lose the will to do that even amongst uh, we lose the we we lose the will for brutal, brutal surplus and uh misery even amidst other evil traits. And he pointed out that Philip K. Dick was one of the only writers who would detail that, who would That's detail true. brutal class oppression, even in a future with inconceivable technological advancements. And what I love about, I think the, the, the Jake Sully, uh, spinal repair surgery problem is he repeatedly does this where Cameron's vision of this future is, no, there's going to be untold technological advancement, but it's still this world. Yep. It's still America. And th- there's something with the design of the mech that we're going to get into later that perfectly signifies this. Yeah, because yeah. the dream that the like the, what the lie we kind of tell ourselves with science fiction, if it's not, you know, like intentionally kind of challengingly transformative sort of like star trek where you're you you stipulate no this isn't our society yeah, this, this is a post-scarcity society. our society blew up yeah like the point of star of trek is this emerged yeah like the, the point of star trek is that like all the technology like uh you know uh, faster than light travel replicators teleportation or whatever are features of the fact that humanity has our human society has like it, it advanced not just beyond the american nation state but, um, yeah, like a, a post-scarcity uh, utopia in which because there isn't scarcity and, like, uh, the surplus uh, created by technology is, like, evenly distributed, yeah. that we are capable to use that technology to explore the galaxy and, and, and like, you know, and, and not at the expense of, you know, like, it's not like, like Earth and Star Trek is just, like, an endless, like, shanty town. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's, it, they've, it's like, oh, we were able to distribute you know, uh, resources across the the planet equitably, and now, hey, let's go see what's in space. Let, let's see what's up there. And and what, yeah, like I said, what's interesting about Amistar is that like we are we are exploring space. We are doing doing probably like one of the most profound things human beings can do: discover life on another planet, walk on that planet, live on that planet. We are only doing it to just continue the merciless death drive of like of capitalist accumulation. Yep, and that's because the like I said the, was saying the, the or trying to get I forgot uh, the 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 lie of science fiction that isn't explicitly utopian like Star Trek is that technological innovation by itself will lead to some sort of phase shift in human civilization, yes. and and Cameron is pointing out when it, no we have we've had two hundred years of technological innovation things have changed but the basic structure has only intensified. A, a, a process of extraction. Yeah, man, I see a lot of that shit on on, on like on, on Globe Twitter. Yes, yes. is it yeah, like they, they all they all say they, they all they all think they're like, they're like oh like yeah yeah there's a lot of problems and like oh like maybe America isn't perfect but you know what with our innovation and like innate creativity creativity like there will be technological advancements that will just kind of solve these problems. The cotton gin will surely end slavery. <laughs> 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 yep. Like apparently we have the technology to uh, use uh, to have like basically every potentially pandemic uh, virus have like early R and D prepared so that if one emerged we could have a fucking vaccine in like three months. Uh, but that that there there's no money for someone else to make there other than the money you're paying scientists to help people not die. So yeah, no, no it's, I, 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 it, it, yeah, it's I F. Make- Murray Abraham and inside Lewin Davis. I will make. I don't it, see a lot of money here. I will. I will make it less abstract. We have a uh, a million plus group of able bodied young adults who could uh, safely provide food and water and every necessity for people during a lockdown, and more than have the funding to do that. That exists. They have. We have been uh, tasking them during this pandemic 
with driving multi-billion dollar obsolete technology around the South China Sea and getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> or having rocks thrown at them in, in year 25 of the war in Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> And we have the technology, like you're talking, like we have the people, we also have the technology in the form of, you know, stuff like the basic algorithms that power, you know, uh, things like delivery services, but those only exist to uh, lose money for giant speculative fucking venture capital firms that are pretending that they're going to build a fucking uh, 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 driverless cars or whatever, and are literally just pouring money down a giant toilet uh, that ends with them getting a giant glass cube home to live in suspended animation and forever okay so like i mean now we bring up uh, another character that's important to the movie uh the, the villain of the movie is uh colonel miles quatrich played by uh stephen lang who in, in in the in the movie is actually like very good memorable performance it is a, it is a very good villain mm -hmm. character and he is the portrayal of of colonial like imperial military management and violence and like you know, like like he he is he is you know a, a former jarhead just like just like Jake Sully, who is now in charge of security for this private corporation. And security means like you know he is there to uh, man manage and suppress the native peoples of Pandora. And you know like uh, and you know he he's just sort of a a swaggering you know like scar faced you know like like hard bitten. Uh, he is he is someone who is, is hardened by the frontier, and the, and like you know he gives this spiel to these to, to, to all the people when they first arrive on Pandora, where he's like, make no mistake, everything outside that wall wants to kill you, and it is my job to keep you alive. I will not succeed. <laughs> Look to your right. <laughs> Look to your left. One of those people is going to be dead in the next six months. Dental school is very difficult. I expect <laughs> a third of you to wash out. <laughs> a lot of people like to get uh a lot of people like when we're trying to make fun of avatar they will point out the the that the first thing he says is you're not in kansas anymore and they roll their eyes that that's a fucking cliche what do you think this asshole would say yes. to those guys <laughs> that's what? how those assholes talk that's how all like every fucking yeah every fucking jarhead that goes on to like start a racist coffee company like they're <laughs> all like that like the tagline to all their coffee is like this isn't your gay dad's coffee. <laughs> it has uh, pork in it, so Muslims can't drink it. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, they're it, all in the coffee commercial when they're firing a minigun at a bag of Starbucks coffee, they'll just say shit like, say hello to my little friend. Yeah. You know, like, because, yeah, because, you know, like, that, that's how their brains work. Um, so, yeah. So, eventually, uh, Jake Sully gets to uh, port into his avatar, into his avatar body. And uh, the first thing he does is like the scientists are like, no, no, you have to lie down. You know, you know, no, you're like your 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 vitals are spiking or whatever. And he just feels his toes move, and he runs out of the building because you know, like he's experiencing for the first time in a long time uh, mobility. He's ex like he experiences the, the, the this this ecstatic joy of being in control of not just his body again, but the, the, this this perfect like angelic. 10 feet tall like uh like a uh, angel basically <laughs> yeah he's like he's reborn like he has capacities that that earth remember this capacities that earth the earth society is preventing him from using like they took his legs by sending him to get blown up in nigeria or whatever by the way all the countries they talk about them fighting in are ones where there's oil <laughs> yes uh, no, no no yeah no, no. quatra says he fought in in, in several campaigns in nigeria and Jake Sully was a recon marine in the, Venez in the Venezuela yep, yep. campaign. And then it's like, well, congrats. You're like, all right, you got us that oil. We have a society that can cure spinal injuries. Uh, good job getting us that oil. Uh, what about my spine? Uh, who's new phone? Who's this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, motherfucker. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake Sully, we're going to do an awareness raising concert about Marines who lost their spines in Venezuela with the modest Yahoo hologram. Good luck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now here's another important facet of this because I said like um, well, in in the in the sort of corporate military colonial like imperial management of, of this mining project, there's sort of there, there there's sort of two nodes of it. There is there's Quatrich and his sort of private security like, and that's the thing like they're not just private security; they are the official armed forces of like the United States or like global government at the time, but they are 
just contracting directly for a private corporation. They're not just mercenaries. They are soldiers acting as mercenaries on behalf of a private company, but they are still technically in uniform. But the other half of that are the scientists. Sigourney Weaver's character, and like there's another guy who has been sent to, to, to Pandora, and like he has his own avatar body waiting for him. And, and he's, he's one of these nerds. You know, he, he's a nerd who's been like waiting for this his whole life. He went to school for this. He studied five years to learn the language. And these like, are the PMC. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. And, and like the scientists think that they're different than the brutal imperial <laughs> machine who is funding all of their research. And they look at all like they, they look at all of this like a, a the perfect and wonderful opportunity to pursue their research like as they as they see it. They they don't see themselves as part of the same yeah. apparatus as, as these military assholes who they have to work under. And then like I guess like the, the head of the whole operation is played by Giovanni Rabisi. And like he's sort of he he's the corporate dickhead. He's like he's the Paul Reiser character from yeah. Alien. But what, like yes. if he wasn't like yeah, the, the, but he is the shot caller on the base. Yeah, from the corporate. Yeah, like Quattridge is technically under his yeah. command, right? And 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 it's it's very telling that the first the first scene you see with Giovanni Ribisi, he's in like the op center. He's in his command office or whatever. And what is he doing? He's fucking putting. He's playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> Yeah, well, he has it's a little, the year 2154. He's on an alien planet. <laughs> and what is he doing? He's practicing his fucking putt. Yep. He's, he's on an alien planet with sights and flora and fauna more beautiful and that the human mind could barely even process. Like just heavenly beauties. And he's like, hmm, when I get back to Earth, they're going to wonder how my putt got so good. It's per <laughs> like it's perfect. The PMCs are so perfect, but the range of the PMCs are so good because Giovanni Ribisi, he's sort of like he's sort of like the McKinsey guy. He's like, hey, come on. All right. Silly Seas is over. Stop fucking around with the blue bullshit. We got to get, get the bottom line going. Uh, but Sigourney Weaver plays like sort of a Samantha Power type. Yes. And, she, yeah. and, 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 and both both her avatar body. And her human body, she wears Stanford t shirts. And yes. has red hair. It's so he's that is not unintentional. Yeah. That is not <laughs> unintentional. But it's like what's so great about it is like the PM the PMCs who like think that they're better than the Marines or Giovanni Rabisi because they have an appreciation for this culture that they are just Destroying. as well raping and pillaging just sticking their fingers in the open sores of this beautiful planet they think they're better because they think when they go home they're gonna like introduce navi words to, into conversation and tell people the blue guys aren't all terrorists and, yeah. here, and, yep. and, 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 and here's the most important part though they, they think they're different than like the, the brutal military exploitation but the thing is they and their research projects and their avatar program are the single most effective means of oppressing and exploiting <laughs> yep. the Navi people. Yep. They're USAID. The yep. Yes. Yes. Because the, they, 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 they set it up like, we want to get this on Obtanium. These blue people are here. They're not high tech enough to stop us from taking it, really. But. They do but they're enough. good enough to fucking kill us real easy if they exactly. want to. And, and so it's like we the best way to do this, the, the, the lowest cost way to do this is to get some fucking nerds in here who read some books about these assholes and try to talk to them and then make them into the blue people themselves. And, and, and then and what do they do? That offer them, of them roads, yep. offer them education. Yeah, they all, offer yeah them, everyone yeah. knows English in the Navi country or uh, in the in the village because they got taught by uh, Sigourney Weavers. Like, OK. Why are you doing this? It's not for the benefit of the Navi. They did not need anything. What what you need is to feel good about the fact that you're destroying their fucking planet. And that's what everybody back home on Earth has to feel like, too. So, I mean, it gets going when, like, okay, so so uh, Jake Sully in his avatar body, like, eventually, like, you know, he goes out into the bush. He goes out into the the vast, like the, the Eden-like forests of this planet. And, you know, he, he and he's essentially there as, as sort of a bodyguard for Sigourney Weaver and the other nerd in their avatar bodies. And, you know, they're walking around out there and he has a gun. <laughs> he's got a big-ass gun as, 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 a, as a Na'vi person. And, you know, he's walking around out there and he's taking in the sights and it's all pretty cool. They got 
oh, wow, here's a mushroom that's 10 feet in diameter. Uh, here's plants that glow when you touch them. You know, here's a tree that's as tall as the Empire State Building. He's walking around out there, and then eventually, because, because he's a dumbass and he doesn't, you know, know or respect the environment he's in, uh, he has a run-in with a creature, I believe, on film they call a Thanator, which is basically like a sort of, uh, I don't know, imagine a tiger covered in, like, you know, uh, bulletproof plates and uh, six legs. And, uh, he, 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 you know, the tiger chases him through the forest. He gets separated from Sigourney Weaver and the other guy. And he's out alone by himself at night in this, uh, in this alien jungle forest. And while he's, you know, stumbling about, you know, being beset by, uh, you know, there's another, there's sort of like a, a species of um, dog-like things that also have six legs. They're like, they're like Dobermans, but wetter. Yeah, very wet, yeah, right? very sleek. And, uh, you know, he, he's bumbling around out there trying to survive. And uh, who comes across him but um, basically the, uh, the princess of, the, uh, the, uh, of, the, of one of the, the main village. Her name is uh, Nyatiri, and uh, she is played through all mocap by uh, Zoe Saldana. And, uh, you know, she initially sees him because she's drawing a bead on him with her... Uh, enormous bow and arrow which is actually one of the one of the cooler parts of this movie is that the Na- the navi's bow and arrows because they're 10 feet tall um shoot arrows that that are basically like being run through with a pool <laughs> yeah. cue. they are they're enormous and she's drawing a bead on him because she, they, like, they, they, they understand what the avatar program is yeah they understand that like just because this asshole like looks like them but he's still walking around with fucking like pants and a fucking <laughs> he's got thing, pants and an iphone and shit you know like that he they, they, they understand that like this is a this is a this is a, a false body being possessed by a demon mm-hmm. and she rightly understands that if you see one you should kill it yes <laughs> but in you know kind of a corny way uh, like as she's drawing a bead on him with the arrow, like uh, she sees this sort of um, this, this this ethereal spore floating on the air, like sort of dancing through the air that that lands on the tip of her arrow right at the decisive moment, and she 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 interprets that as a sign from uh, the deity that they worship, uh, Awa, which is uh, Awa represents this kind of uh, this biological network. That uh, that that connects all living things on Pandora, like from 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 the giant mushrooms to the trees to the wet to, dogs to the wet dogs to the fucking uh, the the mega tiger, <laughs> and she like she pauses and then like she saves him from the the wet dogs, and then he's like but, uh, but, thanks hey hey like oh it was pretty cool all right and then and then she she's mad at him she keeps calling him baby <laughs> you are baby she, you are baby. <laughs> You are baby because you know he he's he's irresponsible. He doesn't take responsibility for anything. He's loud, and he he uh like a very much like a baby on his own doesn't know how to live. Literally, will die without an adult. So she decides to become his adult. And then there's another scene where the same sort of uh, ethereal angelic uh, world tree spores, like dozens of them, sort of like just jizz all over him. <laughs> yep. And they cover his whole body, and she's like, "Oh well, I mean, shit. If the first world tree jizz wasn't a wasn't a sign from God, then you know, just them gang banging this fucking moron. Uh, yeah, I can there, there's something here, right? <laughs> and you know, like in 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 a classic, like as I mentioned, like a sort of Pocahontas, uh, Dances with Wolves style narrative. She sort of adopts him as 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 her own, takes her takes takes him back to the village, and sort of brings him before." Uh, her mother and father, who are sort of the the, the, the village elders, the, the leaders of this tribe, like her her father is the chief, and her mother is the uh, the high priestess, the spiritual uh, leader of their of their tribe of their community. And uh, the, the mother, the, the dad wants to kill him, you know, rightly, mm-hmm. correctly so. But the mother uh, does take the, uh, the the sort of signs and wonders from the world tree seriously, and. Uh, Basically says to her daughter, "He's your responsibility now. You got you got to teach him our ways." And uh, interestingly, she says, "We will see if his insanity can be cured, mm-hmm. because like what 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 they like what we think like our, our normal human behavior, like our way of doing things, our way of seeing the world, is to them 
clinical insanity. Mm-hmm. It's not just insanity, but a term we've used before to describe imperialism or a, a, a strain of imperialism or a part of imperialism, crackpot realism. Yeah. What is crackpot realism? But a uh, uh, hundred years in the future, you have committed wars uh, in Africa, in South America, God knows where else in in, in this uh, alternate history that uh, Cameron has built. All over the world, raping the earth, killing millions, making the earth uninhabitable and then running it down to its core. All that surplus, none of it put into developing anything sustainable. None mm-hmm. of it into developing a better way of life. Taking the people who got you those resources, who killed those people for you, and throwing them in the fucking garbage and going, hey, uh, do you want to become a blue guy, I guess? <laughs> yeah, here you go, dumb fuck. Um, and, even, just, and, 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 and solely himself, he throws his body away doing this. He throws his life away. He has nothing. Yeah, of course I'll help you. Yeah, of course I'll do this. Of course I'll do another thing for the Empire who I did so much for and I have gotten nothing from it. I can just pretend I know how to walk in this piece of military technology that they made just for extracting more more resources. And if they do get those resources, what do you think happens? They run through it just like any everything else yep. onto the next planet until you run out of planets. We got to go to the planet to keep doing this thing. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> It's that well, that is the most insane thing. That is imperialism. Yep. It's insanity. It's yep. insanity for everyone except for the fucking reptiles. Yep. Because they are the ones who actually gain sucker from sitting in an air conditioned room and fucking putting on a fake uh, green. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, so so he becomes sort of adopted by by this tribe and by uh, Netheria, and she's going to she's going to teach teach him their ways and then like you know of course like he he is able to you know he wakes up in his in his human body and is back in home base and you know they're all very excited to find out that he has accidentally gained access to something that they've been trying to do for years and they all and both Sigourney Weaver and Stephen Lang the fucking the, the military asshole both realize how valuable he is now and they both want to use him for their own purposes Sigourney Weaver, so that like he can um, be shown things about uh, their their biology, their culture, the, and like uh, the way they uh, interact with uh, their their planet that she's been trying to figure out, and then like you know the, this idea of this this like I said this biological network that is like a the whole planet is like a brain, and like every living thing is a, a neuron in that that is connected to a larger whole. So they have, they have this like whole, like not just a spiritual understanding of this like holistic vision of the environment but a literal one mm-hmm. steve, it, steve quatrits the stephen lang guy understands like oh i now have a marine in a navi body who can do scat recon for me and he's going to get me all the intelligence that i need to as as he says to find their pressure points so that when it comes down to a firefight which it will in his opinion uh, we can hit them where it hurts, and we know how to fucking we know how to kill them better. Why do you think the tree chose Jake Sully? I mean, the answer may as well be just moving the plot forward, right? Yeah. But I, I seeing the incredible depth that we only have figured out about this movie ten years later, things like the Stanford T-shirt. I think it's because the tree knew. No, we can't do it to Sigourney Weaver because she's benefited from this. Yeah. She's benefited from the system that is carrying us up in part. This guy is a nothing. He's yep. a nobody. He he can give this up. No one else can. Yeah, and like and there's another guy, there's another guy that was one of the science nerds who was like friends with Sully's brother who was who's who like read up on it and he knew he knows Navi and he knows the names for everything. And when Sully gets picked, he's like annoyed for a long time. But also, he couldn't get picked either, not, to, not just because he benefited, but because he thinks he knows. And the reason that she picked Jake Sully more than anything is that he was baby. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's he was, baby. He could be trained. He could be deprogrammed. The, the fucking nerd could not be deprogrammed because his, 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 his scientific uh, approach to this problem that is embedded within the insanity of uh, imperialism that he doesn't even see means that he would never, there would be so many points of resistance 
that he would never be able to to be turned into uh, an actual person in the uh, one of the people. So and then and then so what is the actual like intelligence that he's gathering here? Here is where it gets into I would say not just one of the more subversive parts of this movie, but one of the like in in a giant Hollywood blockbuster mega mega movie like an actually revolutionary element of this movie is the the place where the the uh, Nathuria and her tribe live is called a uh, home tree and like they they live in like a, a village that is inside this like gigantic tree massive like i said the, the size of a skyscraper keep that in mind <laughs> and then like you know jake explains to uh to quatrich the military asshole like oh like no it's it's supported internally by all these different like struts and columns and like it, like inner superstructures that you don't see from the outside. And he's like, aha, very interesting. So, you know, while this is going on, he spends, you know, months with them and he learns their ways. He learns how to hunt. He learns how to uh, uh, ride one of the, the dragons. He learns how to ride one of the horses. Um, he, he ports into them with his ponytail tentacles. And eventually he is made part, officially made part of the people. He is sort of initiated. He's bar mitzvah. He becomes a a member of their community official. He's patched in. He's patched in, exactly. Okay, now, here's something that I have to mention about our film experience in watching this movie that drove me absolutely insane, and I thought I was losing my mind. After Jake gets bar mitzvahed by the, 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 the Navi people, uh, the Zoe Saldana character uh, takes him into some sort of a, a grotto with a, the glowing tendrils of, of the spirit tree. And she says, you know, now as an official man in our community, you can choose a woman. You can choose a mate. And he tells her, I already have. And they come together and they, they, they join. They, they, they kiss each other and make love. When we watched this movie, we rented it on, uh, on Amazon Prime. And I was waiting for one thing in this scene and one thing alone. And that is the scene where Jake Sully and Etheria have sex by joining their their ponytail like uh like sort of genital tentacles together mm-hmm. and in, intertwining them together in the exact same way they have already shown him intertwine his genital tendrils into a horse and a flying dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, but that, that would... did not happen in the Amazon Prime version of this movie we watched, and I thought I was losing my mind. I, we had just talked about on our last episode, that was like a major feature that we were laughing about about the movie. One of the weirdest parts of this movie is that the, the Navi's um, uh, like sexual functions and their uh, basically beasts of burden are uh, uh, physically uh, penetrated and uh, <laughs> but the same way. That's how I you drive that, a car, though. <laughs> <laughs> the Amazon Prime version of this movie retroactively edited that scene out. Yeah. And I swear to God, I thought I was losing my mind because I remembered that vividly when I first saw this movie in the theater. You want to talk about evil? You want to talk about empire? Jeff Bezos or whoever, or, or like Fox or whoever put this fucking movie out, knew that people made fun of that element of this movie in the past. And they, took, they, they edited it out of the movie without telling anybody thus creating like this fucking Mandela effect gaslighting effect in my brain where we had to look it up online yeah. to find out that it had been fucking changed. Yeah. Yes. May- it's evil. Demonic. Yeah. I think Bezos personally probably took that out. Like he, like Bezos probably hates that this movie has to be, like it's totally against what Jeff Bezos wants and no. his designs of the world. He's Giovanni Ribisi. He watches that movie. He's like, uh, you know what? He, if he did some more uh, work workflows, this never yeah. would have happened. Yeah. No. Yeah. I have to believe this is his personal, personal evil. And uh, one thing Bernie can do during the Biden presidency is call hearings about this. Yes. Yes. Jeff Bezos, who's named his planet eating company after the fucking um, world, the Earth yes. Pandora that we are in the process of annihilating completely. Yes. 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 Yeah, uh, I, 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 like, he, I, okay, about it. While we are recording this episode, a piece of a piece of Earth's Pandora, the size of the state of Connecticut, has just been burned by uh, like a cattle ranchers in Brazil. And he loves it. That's fucking reptile. The 
a picture of him. A picture of him eating that fucking iguana, man. The picture he that knows? is one of the most evil pictures I've ever seen. <laughs> God damn it! It's like, no, well, why I are mean, you like, doing this? Why are you doing this, Jeffrey? Why are you just creating human misery by the boatload and, and creating a, a wealth that is inconceivable and unusable by you in any meaningful sense? Well, I get to eat a lizard. I get to do cannibalism in front of you, and it's, it's, and it's just fun. It's just a slight digression, though. I mean, like, this is one of my greatest fears about, like, uh, like the, the degradation of our culture and, like, the, the corporate domination of every facet of our life is now that, like, now that, that all art is, like, streaming and that, like, nobody has it, like, like physically, yeah. they just have mm-hmm. access to a library that they, like, oh, everything's there, it's great, like, you know, I don't have to worry about, oh, where's the, where's the DVD, or, oh, do I put this in my Discman, or whatever. Yeah, it, it, it's great in one sense, and I like it, but the terrifying thing, though, is that it, the fact that it all exists on a cloud controlled by Amazon means that they can, at the push of a button, erase entire swaths of our culture or edit out things that are inconvenient about things that we've already all experienced like remove it from our cultural memory without telling anyone and for like for nefarious reasons they can do that at the push of a fucking button so if you have if you have that out there a copy of the original uncensored avatar with the alien tentacle fucking scene please let me know because i need a copy of this i cannot bear to think that that beautiful scene of love was robbed from us. And on the flip yeah. side, this is not this is by this is not the only one of this the, the the only movies that this is true of. If you watch the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man on Amazon, the one scene that everybody wants to watch in that movie where he is screaming about the bees, the bees, no, the bees, cut out. Yes, yes, yep. they removed it entirely from the version of the Wicker Man that you can rent on Amazon. I guess because like those things are cringe and we can't have anything cringe. Everything has to be everything has to be smoothed over and like digestible and nothing could be too like earnest or weird or or embarrassing or cringy mm-hmm. because if everyone is pursuing not being cringe or consuming cringe, then they're guaranteed to only absorb the most like flavorless mush. Because that's the only thing, the only way you can guarantee you're not going to encounter something that's going to maybe hit you the wrong way, maybe make you feel embarrassed in some way, and we can't have that. Everything's got to be a smooth, just content orb that you just put, a fucking entertainment pellet that you swallow. I mean, it is not inconceivable that, I don't know, 10, 5, 10, 15 years down the line, if you go to rent Avatar, Avatar on Amazon, you want to show your kid, uh, you know, hey, this is this is James Cameron's movie changed every blah blah blah. You uh, these Chapo guys, they really put me onto it. Uh, and you'll go to rent it, and uh, the the like the movie will have been with computers, just made into a different movie where uh, Giovanni Ribisi is the good guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where yes. He, where where when they show up, that he introduces themselves to the cadets, and instead of saying you're not in Kansas anymore, it's like. Uh, so, well, it looks like uh, Pandora happened. Uh, uh, if you see <laughs> yeah. any seven feet uh, tall Smurfs, uh, say hi for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, uh, he like starts a charter school for Navi children to join the mining company. And then the movie ends with him saying Bazinga. <laughs> I remember? Oh. That Panther literally ends with a goddamn opening charter schools. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. No, this is like, man, um, they have made it harder to pirate than ever and they have never given you a greater reason to buy it <laughs> absolutely all right so back to the film itself uh eventually like it's, it's all coming to a head because uh the mining company knows that one of the single biggest deposits of unobtainium is right under the home tree where all the Navi. oh lives. darn it and like you know they, they know that like look th- this is the only reason we're indulging any of this avatar bullshit or any of like the teaching them English or any of this bullshit is to get them to move from like their ancestral home so that we can bulldoze it and fucking strip mine it. But the, that'll be it though. After they do that, that's fine. It'll be done. Yeah. The, the, where the, the Navi will go somewhere else, and then we will have we got our uh, our Amadeptamium, and we'll we'll be gone now. Bye bye. Thank you for letting us take your tree away. Yeah. It'll so be essentially. Fun. The uh, uh, like the the uh, Stephen Lang's character, the the the, the military guy, uh, uses Jake Sully's own words to make the case for why we should just like just fucking attack them right now. Like they're yeah, because yeah. you know, and the more Jake Sully begins to sympathize with them and become a part of them, like he he says in his own little video diaries, like everything they sent me here to do is pointless. Like these people are not going to leave. 
They're not gonna. They're not gonna become like us because we have nothing to offer them. Yep. Yes. Like they they have a per they, like their way of life is perfect for them. There there is nothing about our world or in a our way of life. Relationship <laughs> yeah. already. We, they don't have to go to space to try to get some more resources to keep the whole thing from falling apart. Yes. Yes. So, and then Giovanni Rubisi's character is like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, is, is there a way we can do it sort of like uh, sort of humanitarian? Can we like limit civilian casualties or whatever? And, you know, Quattrich is like, you know, I'll shoot gas at them first. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's like, key because. Uh, all because, right. Okay. Because you can't have Quattrich can't be in charge. If Quatchers is in charge, then you don't ha- you don't have a, a system of like coordinating like the capital machinery uh, at, to anything other than just conflict. Conflict is just supposed to be you know the the tool. You has to be a tool. The tool has to be weld by a guy who has been sedition- sufficiently conditioned by culture uh, to know. Yeah, we gotta press the button and kill these people's tree and kill as many of them it takes to get the unobtainian. But I gotta feel bad about it. And and the other smart thing that they make clear in this movie is that it's not just like they're on some alien planet. They got the guns. They can just fucking blow these fucking blue people away if they want. Steal their shit. They do make clear that people on Earth are aware of what's going on. Yeah. Like the, like mm-hmm. through the media and things like that. Like the Iraq War. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, if Blackwater does a fucking massacre, or we shoot like enough depleted uranium into Fallujah to like lower the birth rate for the next five generations and poison an entire city of people, that kind of looks bad. Yeah. People go you like, know, maybe people can be, make, make it angry if, about if that. If we're doing this, maybe we shouldn't do all the other things that <laughs> uh, this thing feeds. And, and you have to keep that, like, people know it at a deep level, but you can't remind it of it too much. It can't be in their face. Yes. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, so yeah, he's like, yeah. Okay, like, all right, let's just let, let's just pull the let's just pull the trigger on this. Let's let's start the operation. So, like, you know, Quatrich and his and his and his jarheads, they assemble their their locust like swarm of like you know attack helicopters and this gigantic gunship, and they all amass on Home Tree. They shoot it full of gas. Uh, Jake Sully's trying to warn them, but like he is he is since prior to this like sort of outed himself as like, hey, like guess what, like I've I'm only here because I've been a spy the whole time. Oops. And, you know, they feel a little pissed off about yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, the girl he just had sex with <laughs> is just like... Yeah, it's essentially like one, of those, uh, what? Like, like one of those guys who infiltrates, like, Antifa and then, like, has a girlfriend. And then, yeah, yeah gets her yeah. pregnant or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, cops are legally allowed to do. They love doing it. They, they, lo- they can have sex with women as part of their cover. Yeah. Even though if it's basically rape. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. So then, like, there, there is an amazing scene in this movie. And, and even when I first saw it, I didn't really like it. Th- this scene really stuck out in my brain. And this is where I'm getting, like, not just subversive, but actually, like, potentially revolutionary. They shoot gas into this giant tree. And then, then they're, like, they're, like, target the inner superstructure of the tree. And they shoot incendiary missiles into the base of this giant tree. And this, like I said, giant skyscraper tree full of Navi people collapses and implodes into itself in a gigantic cloud of smoke. And you're watching this, and it is unmistakable that James Cameron is recreating 9-11, but we are doing it. Yes. And this is what we were watching it. Like This is the point. Felix, you said it. The point of this movie that Cameron is saying is that America does 9-11 every single day to the rest of the world. Yes, yes. This movie, if I had to sum up the point of Avatar, it's 9-11 every day. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. That's what it's about more than anything. And, like, this is, this is, like, you will never see another fucking director do this, ever, ever. Yeah, like the closest is like maybe Spielberg doing more of the worlds where it's like, oh, it's 9-11. But, you know, it's happening to Americans. It's happening to Tom Cruise. Like our victimhood is is like is 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 uh, like being uh, eroticized. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas uh, this is saying, yeah, 9-11, that's horrible. All that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, remember that happened to us? No, that's what we do. That yes. is what we do. 
We're the 9 and, and 11 and, and, and doers. We're the 9 11 doers. There's a great scene where uh, Quatrich, like, is, is the Muhammad Atta of this operation. And, and he's overseeing it all. And he's in, the, he's, in, he's in the cockpit of this giant, like, gunship. And there's a great little detail where he's just sipping coffee. He's just sipping his coffee. And he's like, all right, commence firing. <laughs> Takes a little sip. It's just like the, the, the casual banality of just him mm-hmm. getting, getting on with his day as he's about to, like, fucking nuke this, uh, yeah, like, the home, but also this, uh, this gigantic, beautiful tree. It's it's the World yeah. Trade Tree. It, I swear to God. Yeah, yes. So uh, that happens, and uh, you know, and then uh, 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 Jake is, of course, uh, his human body is incarcerated back at the military base for, uh, you know, betraying the uh, betraying the Marines for for going native, and then um, and then along with Sigourney Weaver and the other science bitches. Um, but then, like, they, they are freed by uh, oh, Michelle Rodriguez's character. I haven't, I haven't mentioned her so far, but she's a helicopter pilot who, all, who, who see, you know, she, she's supposed to take part in the 9-11 attack, but is uh, disgusted by it and uh, chooses not to fire. She breaks oh, off. She breaks And rank. I want to point out, I love Michelle Rodriguez's performance in this. I love her character. And she says, this is another thing that people probably made fun of when it came out, but now is genius. What does she say when she breaks rank? I didn't sign up for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's like the smart ass thing to say at the time was like, oh yeah, no, this is exactly what you signed up for. But no, that's his point. Yeah. Is, is that-, that you, you're so alienated, not just from yourself, from your family, you're so alienated from your own labor that you don't even realize what you're doing. Yeah. You are you are in a, a cog who is not even aware of their function within the system until the moment of truth. Yes, and and and, and the whole point of all that superstructural stuff that that's in the compound that they rep, the, the 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 whole gamut of humans on Pandora represent is there to keep you to a point where you're pr- kept from the moment of truth until you're ready to press the button. Yes, and she's the one person, and I think the fact that she's a woman and that she is not white is part mm-hmm. of maybe why she. So does that and it's and that but everyone makes that choice and it's like the reason i think that people get annoyed by things like this because it's like oh look at these you're having all these colonial monsters like turn against the system well some of them but the vast majority of them don't yes the vast majority of people just do what they're fucking told yes so she she breaks them out of the brig and like you know, hops in the helicopter and like you know, like takes off. And, uh, uh, and during their escape, uh, Sigourney Weaver is shot by uh, by Stephen Lang. And like you know, this is the thing. Like they, they are, they repossess the the technologies and and the tools of this uh, like corporate imperial power to fight it, to turn against it, to help the Navi, like yep. to to bring together like the the, the Navi, like the, the their. In indigenous struggle against a uh, technologically superior colonial power, but like joining it with not just the the actual uh, the guns and tools created by that same power, but as as you said earlier about Jake Sully, the knowledge of how empire actually works to yep. to to turn it against <laughs> it. Yep, you know, and like that's it, and that's another thing people complain. Oh, it's it's white saviorism. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, and this is the difference between that sort of mopey, you know, uh, liberal. Uh, 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 you know, colonial uh, uh, narrative is a technologically inferior society. If it is opposed by a unified technologically superior society, is going to lose every time because mm-hmm. the guys with the technology they might be insane husks, but they're insane husks that can press a button that makes us like that gives them the power of being one of them. Almost every one of the other less advanced technological societies, they will lose unless. They can get the button pushers to stop pushing the button or turn the button on the fucking actual people who are making everything or are driving the conflict. That's yeah. only that like, yeah, that's white saviors and whatever. But that's actually solidarity and cooperation just across a culture, not within one. And that is what we can't recognize and what our culture kind of teaches us to act like cannot be transgressed. That was Cameron's real sin with this movie ideologically was suggesting that no you actually can be different 
It is not just like the narrative of being like a colonial, uh, uh, a, a colonial foot soldier or somebody who benefits from empire is not just, yeah, boy, things could be different. Boy, those people sure seem to have the right way of it. But oh, well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I got a 401k after all. That's that that's the that's the realism. That's the capitalist realism uh, embedded in like all the, the, the racial pessimist narratives uh, that people react to and, and what uh, and what they are comforted by. And, and Cameron by saying, no, no, that 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 border is permeable and is that's un- that makes people uncomfortable because that really is the only potential liberatory uh, uh, connection that could be made. The only real ch- revolutionary connection is one that bridges that kind of species or racial or cultural barrier. And, you know, so so uh, the, the, the leader of their tribe was killed in 9-11 and uh, Jake Sully has to return after betraying these people, but he, he regains their trust by uh, riding and fucking an even bigger sky dragon. It's, it's not important. But, you know, he, he gains their trust and becomes, you know, he becomes their Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. And, yes. he, uni- and he unites not just, uh, like, the, the World Tree tribe, but he travels around, like, their other parts of Pandora, and he brings together, like, the, the warriors from many disparate tribes and to say that, look, if, if we don't stop these people now... They're coming for all of you. Yep. And there's a scene where he actually um, uh, prays to the, uh, the, the world tree. And uh, Sigourney Weaver has died, but like they've sort of, uh, I don't know, the tendrils of the world tree have sort of like, uh, like, like accessed her memories. And like she's, she's died, but has been absorbed into the neural network that unites the entire planet. Mm-hmm. And he prays to the world tree and he says, like, if, if, if Grace is in there, then you have her memories that you can see her memories, you can see what she's seen in her life. And you will know that the planet she comes from, there is no green there. It's dead. And if you don't help us, we will do that to, be, to you. Like, that's what Pandora will look like if, if we are not stopped here and now. Yeah. Yes. And the thing is, and you know, it does lead to this, this climactic battle, and you guys can talk about it. But like, what do we start talking about? Like, Jake Sully is this fucking nobody... He's a boring character. You don't even remember his face after watching this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I didn't I even remember I his name. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't pick Sam Worthington out of a room if he was standing in front of me right now. But the interesting thing is, how does Jake Sully become a human being? How does he become a character? It is, it is only through laying down his life in an act of revolutionary violence against the capitalist imperial state. Yeah, like that's that's the his actual like he doesn't because he's still in the avatar body and in his human body, and it isn't until he like you know drives the humans off that he is able to become just a, a just of Navi. That that's what allowed him to finally like sever the connection to 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 and to transform himself. But yeah, it, it is it only happens after. Uh, after slaughtering hundreds of his fellow soldiers <laughs> in another 9/11, and that's yeah. 9/11 as we experienced it. They're doing 9/11 to our brave troops, but you're rooting for them to do it. Yes, yes. By that that point, like it, he made you feel terrible when he saw 9/11 happen to the Navi people. Then he makes you feel elated when they do it to us. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, there, there, there's a specific moment that uh, Felix uh, pointed out where uh, one of the Navi guys, they, they, they come from the sky onto these like helicopter things to attack the, these dudes who are like gunshipping in to kill, wipe them out. And one of the blue warriors who was friend zoned by uh, Jake Sully's <laughs> girlfriend, he jumps into the open uh, hang, op- uh, like rear hatch. Of like this, like, ba- of like this. the bay door is open and they're, they're getting ready to push out this gigantic cargo pallet of explosives. Yeah. Yeah. To blow up their, the, the world, like the, the spirit tree that like is the most sacred thing in yeah. their culture and like in, in, in their ecosystem itself. Yeah. And they're getting ready to push out of the back of this giant cargo plane, this like giant pallet of explosives. And yeah, like the, 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 one of the warriors, like, you know, jumps off the back of his flying dragon into the back of this fucking plane. And there's like, like six fucking jarheads there. And he just starts grabbing them. Like this twelve foot tall fucking like <laughs> he's angelic blue. warrior. He's got he, like fucking uh he's got like feathers on. He's got like yeah. bangles. 
He's, he's a fully starts, actualized like human being, and, and these, these guys little rat-like little grubs rat who are just like, like, like in mm-hmm. military little uniforms gray men. and guns. He starts just grabbing them one at a time and th- throwing them out of the back of this plane. <laughs> yes, <laughs> as they're screaming and falling to their deaths, and and, and I, I swear to God, we were just like pumping your fists in the air. Yes, 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 kill them, kill them all. Kill the brutes, exterminate the brutes, exterminate like like, brutes. Uh, like like Colonel Kurtz says. Yeah, but we are the brutes. Yep, we are the brutes. Yep. we are the savages, yep. and we we must be killed. Yep. And I mean, not not reasoned with, or 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 uh, that, that we come together to an understanding that like, oh, uh, geez, I guess the environment is important. I guess there's a way to sustainably harvest the resources <laughs> of, of Pandora. So that we can build more shit back on Earth. Yeah. You either have no. to stop, stop, fight it, or you have to be defeated. That's it. And that is, again, I, said, I remember like conservative movie dorks being furious at this movie because they were like, I never, I never would have thought that like, you know, the sort of sci fi analog stand ins for US soldiers, like the, that audiences would be expected to cheer to see them fucking put to the sword. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and people did and you know felix you're, you're 100 right guys like dan crenshaw can do epic fucking meme shit about captain america and thana marvel movies and so tom cotton i'm sure when he runs for president will be like memeing about the avengers and shit can't do it for this movie nope no never gonna happen no never gonna happen no you no dan crenshaw can never he will never sell to you that he was that he relates to avatar he will to the extent that he knows about it he hates this movie Mm -hmm. but you know who else would hate it john brennan yep they all hate it because they are all the bad guys in it 9 11 happens to it and americans cheered at it (laughs) that is why we were the people dancing in the street in new jersey (laughs) That is why, and that is why you will never see memes about Avatar. That's yep. why everyone you know who is alive saw it and loved it, even if they won't admit it. I definitely and did. And, what, yeah. and then here's another part of that. And this is a very important part of it: is that James Cameron, unlike all the people who have like created this new hegemonic blockbuster enter- theatrical experience, which might, for I mean, it's gone for now. We'll see if it comes back. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, but those guys. Uh, they understand that like the text of the film is to be by the audience, not experienced emotionally, mm-hmm. but processed intellectually turned into memes. Like maybe you have like, maybe you cry because you see all of your super friends together in one shot or whatever, but that's literally just hitting your nostalgia button. Like, Hey, yes. you remember when you read these, when you read these, when you were a kid and you thought life had meaning and you you weren't, and everything wasn't going <laughs> to suck. Remember how happy you were when it turned out Spider-Man wasn't dead? Because yeah, exactly. You, because like you convinced innocent. yourself that he, he was dead and we'd yep. never see Spider-Man again. Yep. And, and then when was, he came back, you were really happy. Yeah. Like that's the only emotion in them. Like, the emotion in Avatar is is comes from the experience of watching it, and that if you saw it in the theater, man, with the 3D, it's the best 3D I've ever seen in a movie because it was shot by James Cameron on 3D fit cameras that he fucking designed. That he designed, like, and that is the other he amazing designed, thing about Cameron yeah. is that like every movie he does, like, and, and and Avatar is a perfect example of this, and like you know we've shit it on CGI effects in movies before, but James Cameron is the like really the only director I can think of that invents the technology that didn't prior exist to do the thing to fulfill the creative vision that he has in his head. And if it can't, if it, do, it doesn't need to be done with computers, he won't do it. But with something like Pandora, like what the, the vision that he is hoping to achieve needs to be done uh, digitally. Yep. And he needs to do that by creating new technology. And I'm sorry, Avatar is the only movie I've seen probably since Terminator 2 <laughs> that has meaningfully move the ball forward on special effects technology. Yep. Yeah. And what was it done? What did everyone else do with it? Hey, uh, they paid more for this 3D ticket. Well, let's just take a bunch of piece of shit movies we were already shooting in 2D, convert them afterward to 3D, which means that the uh, the screen, it literally darkens the image and makes it harder <laughs> to watch. And then we're going to charge them twice as much for a ticket. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is, I think, like the final thing we want to get to about this movie is Cameron isn't just he isn't just an amazing director I mean 
he's up there with Spielberg. I think they're about equal levels of talent, and just as filmmakers, Cameron writes all his own material. This is all original material by him. He's not taking History Channel bullshit and turning it into slop yeah. that makes you go support the war in Kosovo. He's not <laughs> doing that. But not just that. If it wasn't already amazing enough that he, you know, he creates Terminator after a food poisoning nightmare he got, <laughs> he invents technologies. Yeah. He, and he doesn't just invent technologies and use them and, and, and change the cinema and expression, but he commands armies of people, mm -hmm. 50,000 people working on something like billion dollar budgets. And he commands them flawlessly. Yeah. He earns everyone's respect. He's not like an exacting prick. He knows exactly what he wants. He, if he sees you painting a set piece, he's coincidentally has read 10,000 fucking pages about like polymer painting and is going to show you the way to hold the brush right. And he'll be right. Yeah. There are so many stories I've heard from film people about uh, 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 about Cameron on set that he will he knows exactly what every one of the ten thousand people on that set are doing every what what everyone's job is. Yep. What leader in America is like that? Yeah. No. None of it has any. Everyone has the most narrow aperture of 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 knowledge, which the more power you have is the more removed from the actual thing it takes to do what you're directing the more it's just like some fucking powerpoint shit you learned in college and not the actual like hey what are we doing here why what is the what are the actual like component processes that make up this project no no i was like oh wow well, there should be an l there should be we want a funnier we want us we want a uh the, the the smurfs uh can we have the big smurfs can they have a nike swoosh on the back or whatever the fuck uh and that is why I've realized we were talking about this last time. We said movie looks look like they're going away. And the thing that might honestly save them is the fact that motherfucking Jammer Cameron is right now in New Zealand in a fucking many in a city sized set making three Avatar movies. And a lot of people say when it was announced and when they started shooting it, they say, oh, my God, who asked for this? And the answer is we all did in our hearts. We didn't know it. But James did, and he's trying to bring it to us. I, I remember reading a story about how Cameron apparently came across some quote by a critic who said, it's weird how Avatar made all that money and has no cultural footprint. And he said, well, I said, I'll show her a cultural footprint. And, of course, that reads like an egomaniac. And the thing is, Cameron is an egomaniac because, you know, he has this confidence and he has this ability to do stuff, which means he's probably not uh, wasting time in his mind communicating things to people you know at their level which does definitely mean he ends up kind of going up his own ass in his own mind but uh that's not just him saying oh yeah i'll i'll show you cultural import it's that the reason that as we said um, uh there was no lasting mech, uh thing about avatar is that it couldn't be digested it was emotional and it was subversive in a way that the memes and the cultural like feed uh, fallout of stuff like star wars and marvel can't be and so yeah. it didn't. And so when, when he says, I'll show you fucking cultural uh, relevance, I'm going to make three more of these motherfucking movies. He's essentially saying, I am going to give you Avatar movies until you turn into fucking Navi. And I yeah. think and watching I, I, these movies turns you into a goddamn Navi. Uh, there will be your fucking cultural relevance. And if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't believe us, watch this movie again. This movie, he started working on the special effects like during the Clinton administration. Yep. This looks yep. better than any Marvel or DC or whatever fucking trillion dollar Star fucking Wars. movie. Yeah, it looks way better than Star Wars. Every CGI object has density, momentum, weight. Yep. Every battle you stand up and cheer, even when you're watching on a 20-inch TV, you stand up and cheer watching the Navi jump into space C-130s and destroy jarheads. <laughs> When he may, when the two or three more of these comes out with four or five, what? It, no, this is humanity's last chance. As, as Che Guevara said, two, three, many avatars. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, I mean, what I want to say is like, when you say the beginning, like, like, oh, like, avatar didn't have any, any lasting cultural impact because it, it wasn't memeable. Yeah. It wasn't a movie where, you know, everyone, everyone's doing lines to each other and referencing it in other movies. 
and things like that because I think as a filmmaker, Cameron understands that that movies are an experience, mm-hmm. and yep, he he exactly. he, wa- he, wa- he want he wants you to have an experience watching a movie that and to see something that you have never seen before. Yep. And that and that creates the potential for you to feel something that you've never felt before. Yep. And as Meg and you know you know what again there's plenty of this movie as sort of as jaded kind of cynical ironic people that may may strike may strike you as a little bit a little bit corny. Right? But that's fine because I I genuinely do think megalomani- megalomaniacally or not he wants you to feel something. And he wants to change the way you think, and he wants to save humanity. Yep. Yes. And he like, wants to hey, save humanity. You, it's like somebody says, and people point out, "Oh, wow, easy for him to say." You know, Hollywood celebrity. This movie isn't going to change the world. That's that's cope. Yeah, we're all coping. Everybody's coping. But James Cameron can make a fucking movie. That's what he's good at. What do you yeah. want him to do? Something else that he would be worse at? This is not. Cameron is not the Orson Welles or the D.W. Griffith or that of our time, because we live in a bug, soy, whatever you want to call it, time, whatever it is, hell world, clown world, fucking whatever, our Napoleon is a film director. As it had to be. As a society of spectacle, what job? Coordinating a vast uh, bunch of people to get something done? Well, we have a military, but as we said, that's not their job. Their job is just to keep fighting. It's not to win anything. If you want to command people to a goal and see it achieved, you got to make a movie. That is, he is Napoleon, he is Alexander, he is Xerxes. Mm -hmm. He is the greatest administrator in North America. Yeah. And, And, you know, I think back, again, we talked about it last episode, how when we talked to Naomi Klein, she said, I don't know what can make Americans care about imperialism. It's right in front of us. It's true. It's right in front of us. And th- the thing, Avatar isn't, at the end of the day, it's not Dances with Wolves or it's not any of those horrible Hollywood ho- Hollywood guilt pieces that they made in 2006 and 2007 after they booed Michael Moore for talking about the Iraq War yeah. at the Oscar. <laughs> a sudden, suddenly, oh, we feel bad. Here's yep. a movie where Matt Damon is sad in Iraq. Yeah. No, it's not that because they're all about defeat because the left in this country wants beautiful defeat. Yep. Because they fetish, they have accepted at a deep level their powerlessness because of their comfort. Our comfort uh, is attached inextricably to this machine. There is no way that you can imagine sustaining yourself outside of this system. And so you have to cling to it even as you hate it. And then you have to just watch culture that like allows you to sort of sublimate that feeling. And uh, you're talking about how, you know, it doesn't have a cultural revenance, but when Avatar came out, there was a real phenomenon of people talking about how they were depressed after the movie because they couldn't go to Pandora. But what they were really depressed about is the fact that they fucking live on yeah. Pandora and they destroyed <laughs> yeah. it. We yeah. live here. We live it. And, but that's the message of the movie. You live here. Yep. But you, you, are the live, you, you live here, but the, the frontier does not have to be the frontier. Yep. Destroy the frontier. It's all... Pi- you are them. The yep. people that live in the fucking rainforest, you are them. The yep. people that live on Iridium in Afghanistan, you are them. Yes. The people that live in Yemen, you are them. Yes. We are all them. We're There's no world tree physically there, but we're all them. Destroy the frontier. Destroy the empire, and we will realize that we are all on Pandora together. That's it. That's it. That's it. However, if I could offer just one critique... Of, of 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 the plot and, and and the vision at the end of this movie that it doesn't land quite right for me, even though I understand why he did it. At the very very end of the movie, after the Navi are victorious, they um they expel all of the humans off of their planet, and they they allow some of them to stay, like the ones who fought with them. Um, but there's a scene where they're they're sort of marching them all back onto their space shuttles to like go home, Yankee, and they say go back to your dying world. Uh, knowing what we know, particularly about the history of uh, the American conquest of the, the, the West in this country and our indigenous peoples in this country, uh, the Navi um, should have killed all of them. Well, for sure. But I, and I will say, but, the, but, the, but about that, another, uh, to another answer uh, to the question of who asked for this, uh, does this movie really need a sequel? Uh, well, no. I mean, there, there isn't a fucking uh, post credit sequence where... Uh, Giovanni Ribisi gets back to Earth, and there's like a Navi guy with an eye patch talking, like gonna create a new fucking ep- uh, show to watch. 
uh, the, uh, new, oh, right. The movie you watch is actually just a commercial for another movie, psych. Uh, but like just narratively, you know, as an earthling, as one of the people from the dying planet that, oh, OK, they're going to come back and kill all of them unless unless Jake Sully and the Navi are able to turn enough of us into them to stop it. And I got to think that that's what these movies are going to be about. These movies are I, I hope and I think they're going to be about the concept of obliterating the frontier. Yes. Because all this stuff, especially even the, the most like uh, uh, critically praised, like you know, post-colonial narratives, they all reify the frontier at every point. They say that because you're in a different society, because one is an extractor and one is a, a, an oppressed person, there can be no like human connection there. And it's like, well, yeah, as a matter of the mechanistic outcomings of people's relationship to the means of production, that's true. But God damn it, you're also a fucking human being. And there is, the only hope we have is that individual human beings, enough of them in a chain of reaction, have a literal change of heart, are able to transform themselves from within. Turn is, the dying planet into Pandora, turn themselves into the fucking Navi. That is the only shot for humanity. Yep. It's not, yeah, the only shot for humanity is that hundreds of millions of people have a change of, change of heart. Yep, it's not going to be people getting, uh, getting, feeling like bad about themselves. And of course, the main thing that's going to make this happen is not going to be a movie. Obviously, obviously. no, obviously not. We know it's that it's going to be literally people in their workplaces, number one, and in their families and in their communities, like building connections and relationships to each other that awaken within them an understanding that oh, oh shit, like these things that I thought I had to put up with because there's no other way to organize a society except chasing after the fucking carrot at the end of the stick that the banker is holding over your face uh oh no there's actually a way for us to uh, conduct our affairs equitably there's a way to distribute surplus justly if we acknowledge the common humanity of everybody within our group and those groups expand and you know if that's going to happen one part of it is going to be people having experiences not just in their lives but in their entertainment realities and if there's going to be a hope it's not going to be because avatar we're not going to if we save the world, it's not going to be because of Avatar, obviously. But I do feel like if there are future textbooks of, like, the bad time and how we got through them, there will at least be, like, one page, you know, about Avatar. Oh, in the middle of this thing where the Empire was, like, eating itself and going insane and its last throes of, like, colonial m madness, uh, the biggest movie was about how the machine was a diseased freak that needed to be put down. Yeah, and all other movies were about how the diseased freak has a human face and is, in fact, good in your yep, friend. Yep, They were <laughs> about, enough, yeah. Enough, enough empowerment zones among the Navi, enough uh, midnight basketball on Pandora, and, and you'll be able to achieve this synthesis where you never break down the barriers, you never r r r uh, change the relationship of exploiter and exploited and oppressor and oppressed, uh, but everyone's nice enough about everyone's accepted their lot enough that there doesn't have to be a lot of that horrible violence there you don't have to have the, the mean guy with the scar shooting people because everybody has essentially conditioned themselves to accept it i just think like what, what makes cameron interesting and different and an auteur is more than any other like big budget blockbuster enormously popular artist his films whether it is the terminator killing an entire police station full of cops <laughs> whether it is the t-1000 literally being a cop yep. whether it is the colonial marines and aliens being washed out <laughs> immediately washed and totally unprepared for the the alien force that they face or whether it is a navi throwing fucking marines out of the back of an airplane as you cheer ecstatically James Cameron in his movies really does portray in a way that is entertaining in a way that kind of like, get, you know, it gets through under your natural defenses. Exactly. That America is the bad guy. Yep. Yep. We are the bad guys. When you see a movie and there's like, it's, it's the empire in star Wars or it's fucking, it's Thanos. And you see that like the, the evil conquering forces in movies that are fought by good people. That is America. Yep. And, and and why is that? Partially because Cameron is a fucking Canadian. Yes, <laughs> I. There is another thing. They are most pretty much all his movies are about the evil of America or the American Empire in one way or the other. 
But I think one thing his movies are positively about, all of them are about motherhood. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yes. and how that is like motherhood and like nurturing is the antidote to the psychosis and the violence and, and the inevitably, as you said, the inevitably self-defeating uh, and, and annihilating violence that will destroy the old thing itself. Like that's the big thing is that Cameron is pointing out none, these systems are terrible, but it's not like, oh, it's so sad that they're doing that, but I guess they're just going to keep doing it forever. No, there's something embedded else. Embedded within it, it will be destroyed. Everyone will be destroyed. The only antidote is the, the opposite of that is motherhood is nurturing is community. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I would love to get into T2 and about how it's about motherhood. But this would be a four hour episode yeah. then. I think we have to save that for another time. I yeah. think we should. I think <laughs> but, we should. I think we should. I think we should wrap it up here. Yeah. yeah. And I will close by saying, to all to all of the Jake Sully babies out there listening, and I include myself Absolutely in that category. Absolutely, we all Sully we're babies. we're all Jake Sullys. We we are all baby. We are all Jake Sully babies. We see you. James Cameron sees you. Yep. This is Chapo Trap House signing off from Pandora. From Pandora. Where you live, too. Yep. Bye. I see you.